Ms. Roshna N, Research Analyst, Energy Transition, Wood Mackenzie. Topic will be India's Net Zero Transition Pathways. Hi, good evening everyone. Um, so this year's our conference is focusing on accelerating India towards Net Zero pledges. Um, so I would like to take you through how it would take us or how our energy systems needs to transform to reach Net Zero by 2070. So, so far, um, our presentations were focusing on like the technology level. So I would like to take you to a view of like 30, 35,000 feet above and give like an integrated view of how our energy systems and energy requirements needs to evolve. Uh, so before I jump into the presentation, I would like to give a short introduction about Wood Mackenzie. Um, so we are in the 50th year of providing quality data analytics and insights. Um, and uh, we have like very vibrant and diverse teams, a global community consisting of upstream and downstream uh, teams like oil and gas, mining sector, covering energy transition metals recently. And also we have ammonia and hydrogen services and carbon capture and CCUS. Together we capture around 150,000 assets globally and my team works at the juncture of everything. So we are energy transition service team and we provide an integrated view of energy and emissions at the country level. Uh, also, as I mentioned, we are providing like a base case for 150 countries, providing a likely emissions and energy pathways. We also track 250 plus new and emerging technologies and providing a ranking system based on uh, the technology readiness level, scalability, the policy support um, each technology is receiving at different markets. Along with the base, uh, base case, we provide the net zero modeling for 19 key markets, including India. So today I will focus on India's net zero modeling. So first let's look at uh, the base case or what is the likely emissions uh, in the current pathway, considering the current policy evolutions and policy support. Uh, so India's emissions uh, would continue to grow. It's likely to peak around 2037, and then we see a gradual reduction in emissions owing to uh, more adoption of uh, energy, clean energy technologies, induced uh, te induce efficiency measurements, as well as carbon capture technologies. And this scenario is consistent with a 2.5 degrees Celsius global warming. So last year when we did this modeling, we were in the 2.8 degrees Celsius pathway. Uh, so we do see some uh, improvements in uh, reducing our emission um, emissions or keeping uh, reducing our emissions and uh, in, in the long term. But that is nowhere close to a net zero pathway. So in the uh, pledges case, which is aligned with uh, net zero by 2070 um, uh, target, we'll be in a two degree Celsius warming pathway. Um, and, and in the net zero uh, scenario that is uh, aligned with reaching global net zero by 2050, uh, which is the most ambitious goal, uh, uh, it's aligned with the Paris Agreement, we need to continue to reduce our emissions from the next year itself. Um, and uh, many of you might be aware about the NDC target uh, of India. Uh, so that is to reduce our global um, or GDP emission intensity by 45% uh, by 2030. So in the base case, we will reduce our emissions only by uh, 30%. And in the pledges case, we'll be still on track to meet those targets. But for that, we need to change from the base case trajectory to the pledges case trajectory. So for that, we need to radically transform our energy systems. So the graph on the left side shows uh, the end use energy demand. And in all the scenarios, the energy demand will, will uh, see a growth. Uh, we won't see any picking. Um, and for meeting our um, climate goal, we need to change our energy mix. So in the pledges case, uh, we need to increase our fossil free share by around 75%. We are currently in around 25% uh, share. And bioenergy and hydrogen would play a considerable role. 
Uh, so bioenergy, which is currently used in the uh, residential sector, would see a growth in consumption in industrial sector, mainly for heating uh, purposes. And currently, we are unutilizing our bioenergy uh, uh, resources. So we have around uh, 250 million tons per annum of bioenergy resources currently, but most of it are unutilized. So we need to expand our infrastructure and supply chains um, to, to leverage bioenergy usage. And hydrogen would account for around 11% of the share uh, in the pledges case. So hydrogen will be mainly used in iron and steel sector, uh, fertilizer industries, and also in the marine sector in form of low carbon methanol and uh, ammonia. So of all the energy uh, forms, electricity would account for more than 50% share, even in the base case. So we need to increase uh, electricity uh, supply and those electricity needs to be uh, sourced through fossil free share. So that's the key theme of decarbonization. So we need to electrify as much as possible and supply those electricity through um, fossil free sources. So how would our electricity demand would grow? Our electricity demand would grow by around threefold in the base case and close to fourfold in our pledges case. So the key sectors are RCA, the residential, commercial and agriculture, and um, the industry sector. The electrification share in RCA would grow to more than 80% in the pledges case compared to, to just over 50% in the base case. But we don't have to increase our uh, electricity demand linearly. That is because of uh, usage of highly efficient appliances in the RCA sector. Similarly, in industry sector also, electricity share grows. So the key increment in electricity demand would be seen in uh, transport sector and for hydrogen production in the pledges case compared to the base case. So overall, our electricity demand uh, would grow close to 7,500 7, terawatt hour in the pledges case by 2017. So uh, we have covered electricity demand. So how would our supply would look like? Uh, the supply would look very different uh, even in the base case uh, by 2070 um, because, of, because we are seeing a lot of traction and acceleration in solar and wind uh, currently. And uh, the share of fossil free mix in, uh, by 2070 in the, in, the pledge, in the base case would increase to more than 58%. And this needs to increase by more than 90% uh, in the pledges case. And in that, around more than 60% is wind and solar. And we have also given considerable importance to nuclear and SMR reactors, which is small modular reactors of size less than or equal to 300 megawatt. Uh, the share of uh, SMR uh, in the generation would increase to more than 3.5% uh, by 2070 in the pledges case. So India had already started uh, looking at uh, developing the SMR technology uh, very uh, recently. And uh, of course, the bioenergy would also play a key role. The bioenergy share in the generation mix is currently less than 1%. So that would increase to more than 6% by 2070 in the pledges case. So this includes usage of uh, biomass, which is unutilized currently, as well as uh, waste to heat projects. Uh, so that's the snapshot of uh, power generation mix. So for, so how we need to as, uh, increase our installed capacity. So the installed capacity would grow by more than uh, 2,200 gigawatt by 2070 in the pledges case. We have accounted for a high efficient and uh, high uh, load factors uh, for uh, variable, um, uh, variable uh, electricity, uh, variable sources like solar and wind in the pledges case. And the solar and wind itself would account for around 1,600 gigawatt of installed capacity. And this is like more than one point times growth from the base case. And to support those variable uh, capacity of solar and wind, we need to have close to 450 gigawatt of battery storage. And, uh, and right now the cost of battery is very high. 
And there are some support schemes, uh, incentive schemes um, uh, for solar, uh, for battery. So that needs to be scaled up. So how would our uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, uh, mix would look like? So the oil demand would continue a, a, a decreasing trajectory in the long term in all the three scenarios. And that is mainly because of road electrification. And in the base case, aviation sector and marine sector um, would, uh, would see a consistent or sustained oil demand. That is mainly because of high cost of sustainable aviation fuels and uh, lack of like expansion of uh, those technologies. But uh, in the pledges case, we would see that around 30% of uh, mix uh, in the aviation would be through SAF. And similarly, in the marine sector, we'd see around 30% of adoption of low carbon ammonia and hydrogen. And, but the only sector that we would see a con continuing growth of oil demand is the petrochemical sector. We are expecting like around five times growth by 2070. And coming to the gas demand, on the other hand, it would continue to grow. And in fact, in all the three scenarios, the gas demand would look very uh, close in all the three scenarios. And this is mainly because of the um, gas acting as a transition fuel away from oil and coal, as well as it also supports developing the infrastructure for hydrogen. And this shows that the gas explorations needs to be expanded uh, for more energy security. Uh, our gas demands, uh, gas team uh, view is like around 23 BCM of uh, gas production by 2070. So the remaining needs to be imported and there is a strong LNG demand uh, uh, growth. And coming to the coal demand, coal would see a structural decline, um, mainly uh, in all the, all the sectors. Uh, the thermal coal, metallurgy coal would see a declining trend. And the, all, and the major uh, sector of coal cons consuming sector will be steel making sector by 2070 for the remaining 20% uh, uh, that 20% uh, of the base case compared to the pledges case. So now let's look at hydrogen. So as I mentioned, uh, the hydrogen would play a considerable role uh, in declining the fossil fuel consumption. So the hydrogen demand would increase to uh, 50, uh, 15 million tons in the base case, and that would steadily increase to around 35 million ton by 2070. And in the pledges case, we need around 35 million tons by 2050 and grows to around uh, more than 80, 80 million tons. And this requires that the hydrogen production needs to be scaled up. Uh, uh, we assume that around 70% of it is through the green hydrogen and India has a lot of scope for uh, other low carbon hydrogen, uh, like gas paired with CCS and of course biomass uh, 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 based hydrogen is getting a lot of traction and we are developing a lot of indigenous uh, technology rather than depending on um, developed countries for the technology. So those uh, production methods that we can leverage uh, to supply hydrogen. And coming to the carbon removals, because even if we, uh, uh, we do a, a drastic change in our energy systems, uh, we still have residual emissions uh, to reach uh, net zero by 2070. So for that, we need to increase the CC, CCUS capacity addition. And overall, uh, the carbon removal requirement is more than 1 billion tons. And nature-based solutions like forest sinks would also play a key role. We need to do afforestation, reforestation work, because most of our uh, forest areas uh, in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh are declining, and also in the northeastern regions. And many of these regions are in the hotspot, climate hotspot regions. And many more would be in the climate hotspot region soon. So our, we, have, we, are, we will be facing more challenge uh, for increasing our natural carbon sink. And also on the CCUS, we only have currently one project which looks at the CCS uh, part. All the remaining projects are on CCU, uh, carbon capture and utilization. So we need to have more demonstration projects um, uh, to reach uh, this goal of having like more than 1 billion tons of uh, carbon uh, uh, removal target. So what are the key takeaways? So uh, this year we are seeing a lot of progress uh, than any other year, mainly because of all the, gun, all the policy support incentives. And the solar and wind share had grown to around 11%. Uh, 
um, and uh, many of we we need to accelerate uh, this uh, project announcements um, because uh, because in the case of hydrogen we have like 28 projects uh, promising projects accounting for 2.8 million tons per annum and our target for 2030 is 5 million tons per annum so we need to have more project announcements and whatever projects we have in the announced stage that needs to be uh, shifted or that needs to be developed to the FID stage uh, very soon. Um, so, and also like uh, the recent carbon scheme or uh, uh, carbon market announcement is, is a positive outlook for the investors. So um, uh, we hope that there will be more announcements on the carbon pricing very soon. Uh, and this gives a very positive outlook for India. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you.